right, welcome everyone. I am Leanne Brown. I am with the Morton Chamber of Commerce and the Morton Economic Development Council. And I feel like we're at a chamber function with so many inspired, talkative people. So this is uh, a great group that we have gathered here. So welcome. I just want to share a few thoughts um, to, to start us off here and want to set a vision. Picture yourself on a vacation, a place that you've never been. And it takes a little while to move through familiarizing yourself of where you're at, finding that quickest path down to the beach, finding the quickest path down to the pool, finding that local little coffee shop, a great place to eat, and meeting the people that you're around. And after several days, you feel very comfortable you kind of get in a groove and it's harder and harder to leave because you start to settle in. And this is what we want for our welcome wagon, for our greater Peoria region to be those people helping many become familiar with our greater Peoria region and all the things that we get to enjoy every day living here, working here, and experiencing our, our greater Peoria region. So I encourage you, if you've not read this book, that you should. Because we all should embrace where we belong. And this is where you belong. And this book sets inspiration to how you get connected with your region, with your community, with your neighbors, with your businesses, with our nonprofits, and it's inspiring. And this is the group that does this every day, and this can give you additional tools and inspiration to carry that forward. So why is this important? From Morton specifically, it's important, we know in working with our businesses, they need people. They're turning away work because they don't have people to really channel their, their business opportunities forward. We have uh, an aging population in our Morton community. We want to expand that and grow. And we host a little event called the Annual Pumpkin Festival. And we welcome 75,000 people, but we want to expand that and have that as a continued signature event to experience what we all get to enjoy throughout our greater Peorian region. So thank you for your investment into our greater Peoria region. Thank you for inspiring others to take advantages of the opportunities. That's what it's about. It's about attracting people to have opportunity. And we're just thrilled to have uh, this room of incredible people uh, to embrace uh, more, welcome uh, further residents, coworkers, friends, family, and, and really celebrate what the greater Peoria region has to offer. So with that, I hope you are inspired today. Learn some additional resources and tools to equip you, and most importantly, have fun this morning. With that, I'd love to turn it over to Lori with KB, uh, KDB, rather, staff, and uh, share a little bit more with you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thank you for, like she said, investing in yourself, but also investing in the Peoria, greater Peoria community. We are so blessed to have so many great individuals in the room today that really have invested a lot personally, professionally, financially, and just have a really solid passion for the greater Peoria area. So I am with the KDB Group. I am uh, Lori Berklin. I uh, am Kim Blickenstaff's niece. And he has, like many of us, has invested into our community. And we're very, very grateful for what he has done. We stand here in the Scottish Rite Theater. Um, if you have not been here, I encourage you to make this your first of many visits. Um, our concerts have been phenomenal. Who's been to a concert here? The sound system, the lighting, the, the talent, 
that we're putting on the stage here is just, I'm getting goosebumps because, you know, what we have here for the Peoria community has been just phenomenal. And I feel like we have brought back and contributed to a lot of the talent and art that is happening in our community. We also have the Betty Jane Bremer, who's been to the Betty Jane for a concert or for an event. If you haven't experienced the old Kelly Library transformed into this beautiful performing arts center, I encourage you to invest some time and, and spend a weekend. We have the Nana Wall that opens up, so we have these open air concerts that are so, so enjoyable to sit on the lawn and just relax and kick back a few and enjoy some great talent and music. We also have San Cody Lakes, and I'm only mentioning three of our many, I believe, 76 projects, um, but I believe that San Cody Lakes is a great contribution to this greater Peoria community. If you have, who's been to San Cody Lakes? This summer, I would like to see everybody's hand raised for San Cody Lakes. Who grew up with Twin Lakes? Oh, come on. Who grew up with Twin? You know what, we've got a young generation here, and, <laughs> and you need to talk to people who are at your table who have been to Twin Lakes, because San Cody Lakes, we've recreated Twin Lakes, and there's some very fond memories that are going to happen out there. So we have lodging out there for events that are happening in the greater Peoria area, so keep us in mind if you're um, talking about the, the San Cody Lakes and a place needing to reside. We have some glamping tents we in, uh, imported from the Netherlands, so basically a very nice hotel and a canvas tent. But I tell you these three projects, and I'm, and I'm really proud to say that every project that Kim has brought to the greater Peoria community has been for the community. It's to bring the community together. So we have some great events that are happening. You will see your friends, families, neighbors, strangers at these events, and I encourage you to meet new people when you come to a concert here at the Scottish Rite. On your tables, and if not, there's also some posters on the wall where we have um, Jim Messina playing here. I believe the date on that is March 12th, if I'm right. Um, we have also on your table, you see like We Banjo 3. So these are, these are things that you can promote when you, I, first of all, I want you to experience these, these events so that you can, when you're recruiting people to our greater Peoria community, and when you're um, re uh, showing houses and, and you know, getting people to buy into our community, that you can passionately talk about all the events that we do have and what we have to offer in our community. In closing, first of all, I, I'd like to share um, some comments that Kim had shared with me and with um, some others. And I, and I want you to, to really look at and, and applaud yourself for investing in our community. You know, there's one thing to have hope. And we can all hope about things that we hope will happen. We asked him about his success one time throughout his medical device career, which is very phenomenal. But he said, what we need is critical mass optimism. So critical, map opti critical mass optimism, if you, if you think about it, it's right here in the room. It's coming to events like this, learning about Discover Peoria, learning about the East Peoria community, Morton, Washington, all the surrounding communities and what we have to offer. So optimism, rather than hope, optimism is a call for action. So when we look at critical mass optimism, we are all called to action to help our community in one way or another. And there are many, many ways to help our community. So once again, I thank you for choosing Scottish Rite Theater to have your event today. I encourage you, the staff is probably going to wring my neck on this, but I encourage you to walk around, especially go up into the theater and just walk up there and, and enjoy the investment in, in revitalizing this, this great old building. 
Thank you very much. Have a beautiful day. You're going to have some great presentations, and I appreciate your time. Thank you, Lori. Let's hear it for Lori and this uh, amazing space provided by the KDB Group. Uh, good morning. I'm Joshua Gunn. Uh, for those that I haven't had a chance to meet, I'm the president and CEO at the Peoria Area Chamber of Commerce and the CEO Council. Uh, I am excited to be here because uh, this is somewhat of a personal connection for me in that I'm pretty new to the area. So I moved to Peoria in July of 2020, and uh, I've been asked to share a little bit of my story in terms of what my experience was like when I came to Peoria. So uh, I was uh, interviewing for the job at the Chamber, and uh, of course, when you're interviewing for a job, you, the HR professionals in particular know that you want to um, encourage the person, you want them to like the area, so you do all you can to sing all the praises of the community. Uh, so I was fortunate in that you know the chamber consists of community champions, right? Our board of directors, really anybody who wants to engage with the chamber of commerce is typically a community champion, someone who's optimistic and has positive things to say. So throughout my interview, I heard lots of positive things about Peoria. And I also had the distinct pleasure of riding around with Michael Loof to uh, get a Peoria tour. And if you've ever talked to Michael Maloof, you know that there is no one, and I won't even take offense to this, but no one sells Peoria quite like Michael Maloof, right? I mean, his passion for this community uh, was infectious, and uh, quite honestly, is one of the reasons why I'm here today. But so I got to ride around in the car, and Michael was nice enough to FaceTime my wife so she could see the community. Um, and I saw, uh, something that was the opposite of what I expected. And it was the opposite of what I expected for several reasons. One, when I um, met with a recruiter about the position and had my initial interview, of course I went to Google, you know, what's Peoria like? And has anyone Googled what's Peoria like in the past two to three years? Not the best, right? So, uh, I am a person who is driven by impact, so that didn't scare me. I thought, hey, if the community has some challenges, hopefully I can come and make a positive impact. Um, but it was really difficult to find anything positive about Peoria that wasn't written by, you know, Discover Peoria or the Chamber or someone who's directly incentivized to sell the, the community, right? If you go to a store to purchase something, of course the salesperson is going to tell you all the good things about the couch or whatever it is that you're buying. But you really want to read those testimonials, right, from the community or the people who have purchased that couch before. Uh, and those were really hard to find. I found, uh, you know, Peoria is uh, a declining, a community of declining population, a place that once was, and, uh, you know, worst place for African Americans in the country, and high crime, and it was pretty alarming. Not alarming enough for me not to take the next interview, and. So I told my wife, hey, they're inviting me out to go to Peoria, and she says, that's fine, go visit, you know, it's a free flight and free breakfast or something, so uh, it can't hurt anything. But she was sure, based on what she had read about Peoria, that we were not coming. And uh, so I interviewed, and for me, the passion of the people was the complete opposite, right? It was like, Peoria is a great place to raise a family. Peoria is an amazing place to live. Um, my family's been here for three generations, or my family has, is a first-generation Peoria family. Either way, there was nothing but good things to say. Um, and so I called my wife after the interview. She's like, how did it go? I said, I don't know. Hope they like me. Uh, she was like, it doesn't matter if they like you because we're not moving to Peoria. So uh, uh, Michael was super helpful, though, when he drove us around because she was able to see what I was seeing in real time. She saw... First of all, um, this is my pet peeve that I don't want anyone who's been here a long time to be offended. Peoria is not a small town. Let's all say that together. Peoria is not a small town. If you've seen the Peoria skyline, it's not a small town skyline. The community that I came from is Durham, North Carolina. I should have lived with that. Uh, Durham is about three times the size of the population of Peoria today. But when I was a child, it was about the same size, about 150,000, somewhere in the 300,000 
range now. Um, but it doesn't have a skyline like Peoria, right? It doesn't have the amenities that Peoria has. We have we don't have small town amenities in Peoria. We have big city amenities. We have an amazing botanical garden, a zoo, uh, a world class riverfront museum. Uh, you know, uh, top tier universities, a great park district. No offense to our small towns in the region because small towns are super important to what creates this ultimate regional appeal, but Peoria is a small city that packs a big city punch. And that was easy for us to see, and my wife was intrigued by that because, um, quite honestly, when we think about town attraction, there was something about small town that didn't feel like where we wanted to spend the rest of our career. But small city with big city punch and access to these great small towns with things like a pumpkin festival and a marigold festival and you know what we say on our you'll see some of our marketing for GP twenty thirty in a bit true urban in proximity to uh, the country or a rich country that's valuable and that is something that we can sell but small town dying population declining those aren't things that were attractive but what my wife was able to see in riding around with Michael changed her mind a bit. Um, but it did, we didn't sell our own Peoria until we brought her here, right? Sometimes there's things that you just need to, to see. But a little bit about what I want to talk about is what we can do to make sure that people give it a chance and actually come here and see it. I'm a believer that once you get here, you can understand it and you can feel it. Um, but there were a little bit of barriers uh, to Ultimately, me making my decision, which I think was, uh, at least for my family, an uh, amazing decision. We're proud to be in Peoria. We're loving our time here. And I want to help us create more of those stories. So I just told you the story of all the people that were uh, either paid to or incentivized to recruit me here, what they had to say about Peoria. But I also want to share why I think it's important that you all are here. Outside of those, that small group of people who were interviewing me or recruiting me, no one else that I met during my two visits had anything good to say about Peoria. So I had an Uber driver who I had a suit on, dressed like I'm dressed this, like, what are you doing here? Uh, are you interviewing with Caterpillar? No, I'm not. I'm interviewing from the chamber. And he says, whatever they tell you, do not take the job. It's a true story. So I check into, uh, this part I shouldn't tell because there's only a few hotels, but I check into my hotel, I won't say which one, and same thing, the person at the front desk says, we love visiting travelers, thanks so much for coming to visit. I said, well, I'm not actually visiting, I'm interviewing for a job and I'm thinking about moving here. And she says, oh no, don't, this is not, don't do it, right? And she goes on to tell me why, right? It's this story, that was really kind of consistent with what Google had to say. Well, when I grew up, Peoria was great, but it's not so great now. You know, why would you ever want to move here? The weather sucks, uh, you know, all these things. Um, but again, I'm just, I, I'm a, I guess, critical mass optimism, I like that, that term, Lord. Uh, I'm an eternal optimist and I can, you know, I'm an artist by trade, so I tend to be able to see things for what they could be or maybe see things in a way that others can't see them immediately on the surface. So I saw great potential here, and I saw a community with so much to offer that maybe the people who had been here for a while had kind of lost perspective on that. Um, and so part of the reason why I've been excited about doing this, and we've been talking about this for uh, at least a year, about getting you all together, because you know HR professionals and our realtor community, in many ways you are that same front door that I walked through. Uh, for people who are, who are considering Peoria. And I want to make sure that we are all singing from the same sheet of music, that we don't lose that person um, by putting our personal experience on them, right? Um, no community is perfect, and all communities have challenges. Um, but I think we should be careful not to say things like, whatever you do, don't take the job, or, uh, or even things like, Peoria is okay. That's something I've also heard. Well, it's okay, right? Uh, you know, have you been to our zoo? It's okay. You know, uh, have you been to the museum? Yeah, I saw that T-Rex thing. It's, it's okay, right? And you may think that that's innocent, but over time, it builds a narrative, and it does two things. One, it 
maybe they'll still take the job if they really need the job, but it, it immediately creates this sort of stopover mentality, right? You know, I'm gonna go to this okay place until I can go to a better place, right? And we are all responsible for telling that story. Um, and most, most of you all in this room, right, we've gotta be way high on Peoria, like exaggeratedly high, because we know there's so much negative information out there. Um, and we gotta be Michael Maloof high on Peoria, right? We gotta, we gotta really believe that this is the greatest city in the Midwest. This is the best possible place for you to start your career or continue your career. Um, and it just starts with saying it and then believing it, and then we all can work on those challenges. Um, but I think sometimes we get bogged down into those challenges and wanted to share a really real story um, about how I got here. My, my wife will also be a testament to that because she wasn't coming here for a job, right? She was just uh, staying married to me. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, she feels the same way that I do about Peoria. She's so happy that we're here. If you've had a chance to meet her, she'll tell you it's the opposite of what folks told me it would be. Uh, it's the opposite of what we expected. And the hope today is that we change that narrative and that people will expect great things because we'll all tell them how great it is and how fortunate we are to be in Peoria. So thank you for hearing my story. Uh, I look forward to uh, continuing to champion this community with you. And we're gonna give you some tools today. We're gonna talk to you about our campaign and sort of the approach that we are taking as a collective. Many of the organizations you see there on the banners, but there are several that also are not represented. But we wanna to talk to you about an effort that we've launched called Greater Peoria 2030, a 10-year talent attraction strategy to not only attract people, but retain those that we have and grow the region by telling all the great things that we know exist here. And to tell more about that is Vice President of the Peoria Area Chamber of Commerce, Audrey Cannon. Let's hear from Audrey. Thanks, Joshua. So, why Greater Peoria 2030? We know that from the most recent census data that we are shrinking in population, like Joshua said, and it's something that keeps coming up. Um, if any of you are involved in local committees or local organizations, a lot of times people are talking about, well, I really wish we could do something about that. I really wish we could address that. We really need to get more people to see what's great about our region. So a lot of organizations came together and we were already together from the big table, Greater Peoria. So we were hearing some of those things at the big table, Greater Peoria, and that was really an open forum for people to discuss. And what we kept hearing was, yeah, we really need to tell more people these great things. And so this campaign is the first step in doing that. And so we took those organizations from the big table, Greater Peoria, and stood up this campaign with that group that we already had organized. So you'll see we have the Greater Peoria Economic Development Council, we have our Chambers of Commerce, we have um, the Downtown Development Corporation, the CEO Council, and also for specifically this event today, I wanna to shout out PAR, who has been an amazing partner, who is also, um, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, and also shout out, how many realtors do I have in the room? Yes. <laughs> so when you guys show up, you show up. So thank you so much for coming. But you guys have been amazing partners, and we hope to continue that partnership through this campaign. So going back to the previous slide, yes, this is what the whole campaign looks like, just to give you a high level overview. So we started with all this marketing collateral that we're putting out there. McDaniel's Marketing, you guys can wave. Um, yeah. So we, we started this off with going through an RFP process to select a professional to, professional marketing firm to help us because we knew that just our collaborative alone couldn't do this. So we had nine uh, submit for that and we interviewed all of them and McDaniels really, they brought this sense of just they really care about this campaign too. They're from located in Pekin, really care about this region, and have been so involved. Like this morning, they were here helping me lay out flyers. Randy, who's the CEO, was putting Discover Peoria guides on every seat. You know, they're really just going above and beyond and helping. They're really a part of our working group now. 
So um, they have created this amazing collateral and then are also helping us get those good stories out, which you'll see some of those highlighted. Uh, also, if you guys came in early, we had rotating slides of all these different amenities that's gonna be available for you, depending on who you're recruiting, what area they're looking at. It just lists out some different things within our region that are available. So right now, you guys are participating in the welcome and retention pillar. So that was the next thing we wanted to stand up was to, what, what good is all this great marketing material if people don't know that it's there and if people don't know to share it? And I think like Joshua said, sometimes as Peorians who, or people of this region who have lived here for a long time, we can be our worst enemy in recruiting people to this area. And what I found, and I'm sure many of you being on the front lines recruiting people to this area, is that people who are new to the area think that this region is so great. They're surprised by the number of things that they find here. So I think we want to kind of eliminate that element of surprise and showcase that to them before they even get here to help them understand all the great things about the region. And then the final pillar of this, um, which we are hoping to stand up, is the incentives and programs piece. So this is a trend that's happening across the nation right now where people are actually incentivizing talent to move to their region because People are leaving big cities since the pandemic. It's a trend that's happening. People can work from anywhere. And so it's an opportunity to capture those types of people who can work remote and the quality of life and affordability that we have here um, for them to take advantage of that. So if you are unfamiliar with those kind of programs, uh, I suggest you look at Remote Tulsa. Uh, there's a site called makememove.com that lists out all these different areas that are doing this, incentivizing people to move there. Remote Tulsa is paying people $10,000 to move to their region, and they have had, over the past three years, they were kind of the pioneers of it even before COVID started. Over the past three years, they've had 10,000 people apply. And so just think of those 10,000 people, how many of them would have thought of Tulsa before that incentive was available. But now you have 10,000 people with their eyes on Tulsa and they have all this great marketing out there telling people why Tulsa is great. And it's amazing that people have been a part of the program. There's videos of them just touting Tulsa. They move from places like Washington DC, Seattle, and they're super happy with the quality of life that they can have in Tulsa. And we think that that's something that could be replicated right here in Peoria. So we're looking to that as our next pillar to hopefully, ta hopefully tackle. Next slide. You can keep moving past that one. So this is our region, and we just wanted to highlight, we all know this, you know, we're, we're kind of the hub of central Illinois. And when we talk about our region, yes, Peoria, but also all of our surrounding area, that's a 350,000 or so metro area, but even greater, you could think of how we impact the region. It's almost a million people when you think about the people who are coming to our region uh, for events, coming to our region to visit our amenities, like a uh, day trip to uh, go to the museum or to go to the zoo. So we have a lot of amenities within our region and then we also easy access to a lot of major cities in the region. Next slide. So these are the overall campaign goals. These were solidified from conversations that were had at the Big Table Greater Peoria, as well as um, then they were implemented into the Greater Peoria Economic Development Council's Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy that was just um, that was just approved. So we're really seeing this as we're trying to take all these steps to actually make things happen we're trying to take all these steps to work together as a collaborative i think for a long time we've all played a little part but now we want to play a big role together so really the set was put together you know chris says all the time on our working group meetings we all have really small staff and so um for the Economic Development Council to be able to execute everything that's within the SEDS is totally unrealistic. And that's how we see this project as well. This is a collaborative effort. Now you all are a part of it as well. Um, and so we are all in this together to increase the population of Greater Peoria. Next slide. This is just some of the 
photo and collateral. Um, we really wanted to attract a diverse array of talent to our region, and some of the stuff you'll see as we go through some of the ads. Next slide. So now to the interactive part. Uh, did everybody bring a device? You guys want to grab your device, and on your agenda, it's the first QR code at the top. Uh, can you go back to that real quick? Yeah. So the first QR code at the top, and this is the public-facing site that has been stood up by this group. So David, could you click on that link? The great period out. Maybe. <laughs> we got it. There we go. So this is what you'll see when you pop onto the site. And this is a site that you can share with anyone that you're recruiting to the area. So it has some of the information about where we're at, some of the things that you've seen. And then um, really quick, I'll stop here. More about our communities, you don't have to click on it, David, but more about our communities will take you to a page, depending on where they're looking at living. It has information about different communities in our region. Um, do you already live in our area? We have a survey here for you to take and that we're taking those very seriously. You'll see later on I'm going to show you a little bit of the feedback that we've gotten already. Um, but if you already live in our area you can click and take the survey there. And then you can keep scrolling down. We've got videos. We've got housing. Um, information just comparing it to our closest metro area in Chicago, which is very powerful, I think. Um, all of our realtor partners know the amazing quality that you get for homes here and home value here. So that just kind of breaks that out. Thank you to PAR for that updated data. And then um, you can click here and see all these different things that are available. And then just really quick, I wanted to showcase down here. So, this left Peoria region facts and figures goes to, I was talking about that wider net of the Peoria region, so it just shows how vast and wide the Peoria region is. That's a site that the CEO council put up a couple of years ago. And then who's hiring? Chris is gonna go over that in a little bit, but it takes you to a job board that we put up. Um, getting here and top employers, you can look at those links as well. And then we have education and training. And if you keep scrolling down, There's an opportunity to make a difference, put down new roots, start a new business. Um, so put down new roots takes you to MLS 309 and some of the videos that we've done before. Um, and making a difference takes you to a list of nonprofits and ways that you can get involved. And starting a new business takes you to GPEDC's resources for starting a new business. And then if you keep scrolling, then we also have this contact form. So um, when you fill this out or have someone fill this out, uh, we will get back to them. It goes to somebody on our team about the campaign or about moving to the region or interest in the region. And then you can also, at the very bottom, download the digital copy of the Discovery Guide. So all of you have a Discovery Guide on your See, this will be updated with the most updated one. Um, there's also an opportunity to order those, and I will say there are some extras in the back. So if you're a realtor or you are recruiting people and you want hard copies of the discovery guide to hand out, you can pick up some of those or order those, and you can join the Discovery Radio mailing list um, or get a sports planner's guide. So just a lot of different things that we try to condense into one resource for people to see. And I know uh, a lot of people are going away from actually having printed materials, and this will be updated on a regular basis. So it should have the most up-to-date information about what's available in our region. Can we go back to the slideshow, David? Sweet. Okay, so next, we're actually going to go to the next slide and come back to that one. This. Okay, so we are going to, 
do, we're going to get some results from you guys live. So if you could take the second QR code, and there is going to be a survey question on there. We're going to make a little word cloud. So if you guys could fill that out really quick, you can put up to three words that describe what is great about our region. And if anyone's in trouble with the QR code, I can send people around to help. If anybody has any trouble with the QR code, help. Trick to get to the actual QR code that you want. When you point your phone's camera on it, just hit the focus button on the one you actually. Just tap your finger on the one you want, and it will zoom on that particular one. Can somebody write back? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, greatest obstacle. Greatest obstacle is of David. That's what it is. It's the next question. Yeah. If you guys refresh it, it should be describe what is great about our region. Are people seeing that now? Technology. Yes. Has anybody submitted? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Sweet. So we have a little word cloud. We can share this with you later as well. But community, affordability, affordable, people, diversity, opportunity. Loving these words. So the ones that people are putting in more get bigger. It's great. Um, David, you can go ahead and go to the, open the second question, and now we want to know, what's your greatest obstacle in recruiting people to our region? Ooh, here they come. Poor weather, diversity, crime, things we hear a lot. And I do want to. I do want to make note. I think Joshua noted this too. We are not just blind cheerleaders. You know, we don't want to just totally sugarcoat everything and say everything's so great. We want to also have this honest. We want to have honesty about the fact that our region does have challenges. But at the same time, we think a lot of times instead of leading with that or focusing on that, that's why people shouldn't live here. Encourage people that, hey, you can come here and make a difference in this region. Um, perception, absolutely. Weather, weather keeps getting bigger. <laughs> Sorry about today. We didn't call in the weather today. But so great, so all of you showed up, so awesome. <laughs> yeah, taxes, I'm hearing people whisper that. <laughs> So awesome. Ooh, it keeps changing. So fun. <clears throat> okay. So we're gonna you guys can keep filling out and we'll, we can share these, what what it ends up being in the end. But we just thought that was a fun exercise. You guys are the front lines and we really want to know what you're experiencing and we'll help craft like as we're crafting messaging, as we're crafting marketing, we're gonna help cater to that. We wanna help you guys any way that we can, that's why we exist. So if we're not actually helping the people who are recruiting people here, um, 
we're not, not doing, doing our, our job. job. So we'll go back to the slideshow and really quick. So we have two surveys that are on that front-facing site. One is for people who moved here within the last year. One is for people who have lived here in our region. Do we have anybody here who has moved here in the last year? Yes. OK, so yeah, yeah, we're clapping. Let's clap. <laughs> okay, so um, make sure you fill out that survey because your feedback is very, very important to us. It also helps us know if what we're doing is effective. We can see if you've seen our ads. We can see if you've seen our messaging. Um, can you go back to that slide, David, right before this? And then hit that lived in Greater Peoria more than one year. So if you've lived in Peoria more than one year, which is everyone else, you can fill out this survey, and we are using that survey also to help us craft what we're doing so that we know what people's perceptions are who have lived here for longer than a year. Can you click on that link, David? That one, yeah. If we can't, I can tell you what it says. So um, most of the people who filled it out have lived here for a long time, consider themselves lifetime residents, and overall, the perception is that it's more affordable and that when they were asked what, oh, here we go. So um, lifetime resident is that orange bar over there. And then if you keep scrolling down, this one right here, um, if you've relocated from another area, uh, the, whoop, right there, right, the yellow, the yellow, blue, and the green are more affordable than wherever they came from. The NA all the way to the right, that tall one represents people who are lifetime residents. They don't really have anything to compare it to. But if you scroll one more, then this one, this one is huge for us because um, it showcases why people live here. That green bar is friends and family. The blue bar is career opportunities. And then the orange one that's the next highest is cost of living. And then the next highest is less congestion. So I think one thing that we've really looked at in this campaign is targeting people who have ties to this area, some kind of tie to this area, they've moved away, maybe they would consider coming back, maybe they don't know all the great things um, that, that have been happening downtown or around the region. And so kind of honing in on some of those people who have ties to the region. One more scroll down, David. So um, rate your perception of these attributes in the greater Peoria area. So the one that was that big blue bar in the middle, the blue is, the tealish is good. Uh, the highest rated one was quality of life. So again, really important for us as we're spreading message, we really wanna share that message that there's a high quality of life in our region. Now going to the new resident side. So again, career and family, were, those were the number one reasons why new residents moved here. And then um, also it was super interesting to, are we? Yeah. It's okay if you can't get there, I can. It's really interesting, we were looking at where these people came from and they may not be the places that you think. We had Chicago, obviously, but we also had um, Seattle, and New York and California. So we're seeing people coming from some major metro areas moving here. And the vast majority said that the, qual the quality of life was high. Yeah, you can see the career opportunities is that orange in the middle, proximity to friends is that top green, and cost of living is the blue. And then the vast majority would say that it's more affordable than wherever they came from. So, we would love for more people to fill this out. Please share this, these links with people as they're moving here. You can also, those QR codes are on the table tent. And um, we are gonna keep using that data to inform what we're doing. So now we have a little special resource for you all. That, this is the link that you can share with people who are moving here, quick and easy access to things in our region. There's also a link to the Discover Peoria items. So if you want to buy things for people who are moving here, you want to show them a little bit of Peoria, we have some of those items on display in the back. But Lenora Fisher, who is the Director of Business Attraction at the Greater Peoria Economic Development Council, 
um, one of the leaders of this effort is going to come up and share with you a back-end resource that we have created just for you all. Hello, hello. Uh, thank you all again for being here. We're glad to have you. So. Um, what we've been showing you is kind of the front end of this effort. So some of the marketing materials, some of the like the resources that are already a part of Discover Peoria, but to help consolidate it and give kind of a one page run download, we have uh, developed a page. It's peoria.org slash welcome. It's one of the ones on your QR code, but this is a resource where, if, and if we can go to that website and just walk through it. We've, we started compiling all these resources that we've kind of been showing you. So we have a list of, um, we have a, we've got a job board. Chris is going to go into that, so I'll let him deal with that. We have a list of the business resources in the community. So Distillery Labs, the Downtown Development Corporation, uh, SCORE Business, our local chamber partners and resources. Uh, and if so, if we'll keep going down. Uh, the link to the resource guide, the Discover Peoria resources are there at the top. If we keep coming down, so this is again just a consolidated list. These, these, this information is all available in lots of different places, but just to have one deep download for you guys, this is your toolkit. And also I wanna say that this is a developing resource. Like this is just what we've been able to do kind of as we're going. Like we want to expand it and grow it and your feedback in this, like you are our partners in this effort. So uh, this is a starting point. Uh, we'll keep going down. Uh, we, we listed some school districts, like to prove, and the, these links go to uh, different like marketing materials of the school districts, so that there's snapshots and they, you know, uh, people can evaluate what the opportunities and what the different community options are. Uh, local products. Uh, I, I know a lot of you like to give gifts uh, for uh, and, or welcome and kind of orienting to the community. Like these shirts are an example. Oops, sorry. Uh, so uh, the res uh, we've got the regional swag, which is the Discover Peoria page, where if you went to the Discover Peoria store over the holidays, you know, whiskey glasses, lunch boxes, shirts, things like that. They're, uh, they're great materials and they're great for just uh, furthering the brand and message. Um, a local pro you know, the Riverfront Market, East Peoria Market, Morton Farmers Market. I mean, this list can go on and on, and uh, so crowdsource, like, the, we want your input on this, and again, trying to just get it all in one place for quick, easy access. Sports, we know, arts and entertainment, um, and then at the very bottom, we're going to keep going down, outdoor recreation, make a difference in Peoria. This is a part of that, you know, loving where you live is getting involved. So trying to help put some of those opportunities for leadership up front and center and help encourage and introduce and plug them in. What are the board opportunities? What are the volunteer opportunities? Stuff like that. So again, trying to get that resource here. And then at the bottom, the assets and information about Greater Peoria. This is uh, where we are putting links to the materials that have been developed so that you can share it. So some of those social media assets that were on the slide deck earlier. Um, the welcome wagon slide with those pictures that Audrey mentioned. I mean, it's amazing. Like they, McDaniels has gone and given us images for the different things that are cool about this region. And again, that's gonna continue growing and that's available for you to use. Um, some of the regional swag again, and uh, they've also been doing a good job about kind of talking about greater Peoria in the news. So uh, please use this website. Uh, this is a resource for you. Again, please share with us like how we can continue to grow and improve it. Um, we realize that this is pointing to lots of other assets and resources in the community, but it's it, trying to give a comprehensive picture of what makes this area great. Uh, so thank you again for being here. Um, uh, looking forward to continuing this conversation down the line. And I think Chris is up next to talk to us about our job board. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this has really been a great effort. Um, I'm also a transplant. Uh, I'm from Burbank, California, which is uh, suburban Los Angeles. I've been here for 18 years, and Greg Batten the other day on the, uh, on the radio said I, I was a Peoria now. So uh, I don't know, Joshua, maybe you got another 16 and a half years. Uh, but I love this area, and I chose to live here, and I chose to stay here. And so did a lot of you. I'm, how many of you in the audience are transplants to Peoria, to the Peoria area? Thank you for being here. Thank you for choosing here uh, to move here and to stay here. How many of you realtors, at least, uh, have in the last year 
help somebody from outside the community move here. That's pretty impressive as well. Um, I'll be a little contrary to Joshua. I actually think everybody in this room is probably optimistic or at least externally uh, positive about the region. But it isn't good enough to just be uh, positive about the region. You need to be uh, fiercely advocating for the region. You need to tell your kids or your friends who might be Joshua's Uber driver that they're part of the solution as well. Um, you, when you, I don't know if Ryan Cannon's here. I, I see every once in a while on Facebook, he's one of, uh, and I just know he's a realtor, who's always um, combating negativity when he sees it. And that's part, you know, this takes an army. And so I'm really excited to see all of the, these folks here because I kind of feel you're already in the army. <clears throat> we need more conscripts. We need more people to join. Uh, and that's really what this is, is trying to give you the tools to make your job easier. Um, and just a shout out to the partnerships here that we have. Um, you know, I've, I've been in, um, in, a, in a public role in Peoria for 16 years with the city and, and GPDC. And I can tell you I've never seen the level of collaboration between these organizations, between these cities that sometimes feel like rivals to each other, understanding that we are a region. And so uh, to all of the folks who helped put this on, my thanks to you. So I'm here to talk about one particular uh, asset that we wanted to be able to deliver uh, to you. Um, and that is this job board. Uh, it's, it's great to have a message about why it's great to live here, um, but most people aren't gonna choose to just come here because they're independently wealthy or they're retiring here. And a lot of people are going to wanna know what kinds of jobs might they have. Or in the case of Joshua, um, he's bringing uh, a, a partner with him. Uh, so he might have a job, but uh, the partner might need a job. And so we've built this uh, because it's a great place to live. We've, we've kind of talked about that. It's a great place to play. Lenora showed some of those great, uh, you know, the great assets that we have. It's also a great place to work. So this is a job board um, that, we, that links directly to our employer's job board. So this isn't Indeed. This isn't anything anybody has to do. Um, but this will also be available on, our, uh, on the website um, and in a couple of different ways, but directly from that uh, GP2030 website that, that we showed earlier. Um, and it, it have, currently we have 81 companies up here with 1,500 jobs. Um, now, uh, we're, this is still slightly a work in progress and we're, we're still working with the company that, that we purchased this uh, software from. Uh, and it does, a, they call it machine learning. So it's learning all of your websites or all the websites of these companies. But our, some of our largest employers are on this website. Um, and so it's curated to some degree. It's not every job that's available uh, in, the, you know, in the region, but it's some of the best jobs that are available in the region. Uh, and we think this will be really important. It's a good add-on. Uh, it delivers some value to our HR professionals here, right? So if, if uh, Caterpillar is recruiting um, an executive, maybe Morton Industries ends up getting uh, you know, somebody as well uh, in, that, uh, in that pair, right? If Bradley's bringing a professor here, um, you know, then maybe OSF is also uh, ends up getting somebody to work for them. So this is important. It's out there and it's live right now. It is not perfect. We're still kind of working on it. Uh, one of the things, Carrie, who uh, in my office, who, who did a lot of work on this, for some reason is picking up 56 jobs at Wells Fargo. We know there's not 56 jobs at Wells Fargo here. So we're still working uh, with the system, but, uh, but it, it, it will, when, when the machine finishes its learning, uh, it will be limited to the Peoria area jobs. Uh, so you won't see Caterpillar jobs in China or in Seguin, Texas, or wherever those other maybe 55 Wells Fargo's jobs are. Uh, so um, it'll be a really great tool. Please let us know if you have any questions about that. Uh, but I think it'll be really important for all of you. Uh, and you can start pointing your people to that. Those of you who are realtors, um, you know, you're probably getting this question all the time. We wanted to make it a one stop spot for you to go. You don't have to look on the career pages of all of our employers, and you also don't get all the, quite frankly, the trash that you get when you look at Indeed, uh, where they're recruiting for jobs in like Amazon Distribution Center in Seattle, but it looks like it's in, it's in Peoria. 
Uh, so this is really meant to streamline all of those efforts and make it easier for you. So uh, I'm not exactly sure because there's no name on the next part of this. Uh, so I know we were going to ask, do you have any questions for us? And I'm going to ask uh, Audrey to come up and her and I can kind of maybe ham and egg the questions. Oh, we have one more. I'll let like you do that. Then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so we, we do, do want to make this interactive, but we would also love to capture your answers. So you're going to go back to the poll that you took. It's the second QR code, and this should be the question that appears. It's going to be a short answer. We're not going to throw it on the screen, so be candid in your answer. But what other tools besides what you've seen today do you need to be successful in your talent attraction efforts? What? Something went wrong. <laughs> Technology. So, oh, the connection timed out. Hold for one second. But while we're working that out, um, really quick, there's a couple things. Amy McCoy, who's the executive director of the Beacon Area Chamber of Commerce, was planning to be here today, but due to a family emergency, she could not be here. She was going to announce our events that we have upcoming, and I think it's important that this group knows. So overall, we were super overwhelmed by the response to this event. We thought, oh, let's get 50 to 100 people together, um, and maybe some people will show up for this. But I think that just by the overwhelming response of this event, and then people emailing us saying that they couldn't attend this event, but they'd love to attend something like this in the future, um, we decided to host another event like this. So we are going to do another Welcome Wagon event, and this time we aren't gonna market it just to HR realtors. It's really gonna be for anybody who considers himself an ambassador to the Peoria region. And that's gonna be on Friday, March 18th at the Paradise from 9.30 to 11. So if you have somebody on your team or somebody that you know who should be there, please tell them about that. You will all get an email letting you know how people can register for that and it'll pop up on the Facebook page as well. And then on Saturday, April 2nd, something exciting that we have you guys all, I'm sure, even though we have very few people who have actually moved in here in the last year, who know someone who has moved here in the last year? Awesome. So what I want you to do is share with those people. Um, we have a newcomer mixer at the Peoria Civic Center coming up on Saturday, April 2nd. And that's going to be at the Lexus Club prior to the Riverman game. And they'll also get tickets to the Riverman game. And we're just going to show off Peoria, help them get plugged into the community, show them opportunities, depending on what their interests are, to get plugged in and really make it a good time for them. So, and it doesn't matter what kind of position they came here for, whether they're a remote worker, they're a young professional, they're a CEO, um, we'd love to have them all. So uh, send them over to the Peoria Civic Center on Saturday, April 2nd, and we will show them a good time, and we'll have that registration coming soon as well. And then also in the fall of 2022, we are planning on doing a fundraising kickoff campaign. So like I said earlier, we'd love to set up something like an incentive to incentivize people to move here. Um, we want to keep our marketing going. We want to keep events like this happening free of charge. We want uh, to throw nice parties for newcomers to our area to make them feel welcome. You know, Josh always talks about how he got the red carpet rolled out for him, and we want to make that possible for everyone who moves here, regardless of what they're coming here for. So um, we will be starting a fundraising campaign, and you guys do have um, insider information on that. So we are starting a partnership with a community foundation where the fund will be held for GB 2030, and information on how you can give is there. And also, sorry, I was upstairs. Chris, did you talk about getting on the Get Road Job Board? No. So if people give, if people want to be on the Get Road Job Board and they are not on there already, um, if they give at the $500 level annually, they could be on the Get Road Job Board. So with that, <laughs> we have the spinning wheel. Um, does anybody have any questions that we can answer? Any thoughts about this effort? Brian Carroll. So, um, the web 
websites and the, the web resources, um, will there be a standard way for us to maybe link to that from our websites? Do you guys have banners or can we? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. yes. If and you guys host your own website and would like our logo and then the link to link back to it, we would love to get that to you. And I will put that information on who to get that from in the email that I send out post this event. And if we don't get the survey up, then we'll also send that out because your feedback is very valuable to us as well. Yes? Great question. How much will it be, Joshua? Save your checkbooks up. Hey, uh, I'm so glad you said that. I'm also passionate. You say Ryan? Thanks, Ryan. Uh, very passionate about the incentive piece. I think it's going to be vital for us to compete over the next decade or maybe even longer. Um, and I guess, quite frankly, we're behind the curve now. Uh, that website that Audrey mentioned is makemymove.com. And I think there were, last I checked, over 50 cities uh, that are doing some sort of incentive package. And to, when we talk about incentives, for those who may be unfamiliar with this, um, like Tulsa, you get $10,000 $10, to move to Tulsa. You don't, you, all you have to do is have a remote job and stay in Tulsa for a year and you get 10 grand. Uh, sounds crazy, to maybe. But it works, right? Because you know it's similar to if I have maybe some bankers in the room. You know, you go to open a bank account, they give you 25 bucks or something like that. Maybe 25 bucks isn't a life changer for you, but if the bank across the street is not giving you the 25 bucks, you're gonna at least go check out the $25 bank, and that, that's kind of how the incentive process works. So um, there are various ways to approach it, Ryan, and what we're trying to figure out is what's the best way to do it here. Uh, Tulsa, for instance, got a million dollar uh, grant from the George Kaiser Foundation, right? And uh, we don't, as of yet, we haven't identified a granting source at that scale, but that's about how much it costs, right? So what we're trying to do is raise money. So we're the partnership with the Community Foundation of Central Illinois is step one. So we're going to have to go out and launch our fundraising. We would love to hear from any of you all uh, on potential avenues for funding, but also ideas on how we can make it unique to Peoria. Um, every community is doing something that is specific. So West Virginia, for instance, is giving up to $15,000, but they also give you uh, a boat or a kayak because they, you know, they have, I guess, lots of kayaking, or they, and they give you a bike. Um, and so people are making it unique to their location. So as we think about it, uh, what's unique to Peoria that we can offer someone to say, maybe it's not tank, right? Maybe we don't have that, but we have, uh, you know, a free ticket to the Chiefs game for a year and uh, free zoo or park, park district passes. Uh, we want to get creative with the resources that we have. Even if we never find that $1 million donor, we think we can do it as a community. So thanks for bringing that up, and we are all very passionate about making that reality. Whiskey, I love it, I love it. I'm a big fan of calling it the Whiskey City, man. I'm uh, on your team. I also like whiskey. Yes. yes. Hi, Mike Van Cleaver. Mike Van Cleaver, Realtor with New Ranch Traders Unlimited. Thanks so much to all you guys for putting this on today. What an incredible event. Uh, what are three action steps that everybody in this room can do, leave here and do today? Take, Take the, the survey, survey for sure. sure. So, so the more data we can collect, uh, the better. What else? Yes. Well, I, I think I mentioned one. Be an advocate for the region. So when we're talking about this talent attraction campaign, we're really talking about an external market. But the truth is there's an internal market as well. We need to convince ourselves that this is a place worth living and loving fighting for, right? That's all of you are fighting for the Peoria area, right? 
right? Like I said, there's an army here of, of patriots. Uh, but we know there are dark forces lying against us. <laughs> you know, there are people who make it a profession of complaining about our region. And that is seen by the former Joshua Guns of the world when they're looking at our community. So we have to fight fire with fire. So I think one of the things all of us can do is be out there, whether it's on social media or talking to our friends and our family members about the way that our community is perceived. So that's not one thing you can do. That's a lot of things you can do. Whereas one thing you can do over and over and over again. I'll add one. Uh, one, one that comes, comes to mind, Mike, and you're already sort of helping do this work with some of the things you've done with Angie Ostashevsky. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with Angie so far. Uh, she is. A, she works for Amrin in her day job, but has taken it upon herself to be a Peoria ambassador on TikTok and has single-handedly recruited a, a close to 100 people to move to Peoria by herself for free, no money. And um, yeah, we gotta give it up for Angie. Uh, but one of the things that Angie is, also does is these, I guess, quarterly parties or monthly. Mike Alton is already. So quarterly mixers or socials for that group. Um, one of the things uh, that made the Tulsa program so successful, and there are well over a thousand people that have moved to Tulsa as a result of their program now, um, is that in addition to the 10 grand, which is nice, they uh, in, had intentional community events where those newcomers, those transplants, could get together and get to know each other. And what we saw in some of those testimonials is people said that was more valuable than the 10 grand because making friends, building community, that's what makes you stay in a place. And Angie's doing a great job with that. Where I'm going is an action step that I'd love for you all to take is if someone moves here that works for your company, if you're an HR professional, introduce them to us. Send us their email address. Let, let us know that they're here so that we can give them a welcome. The same thing if you're selling someone a home. And it's, it's, uh, they have to opt in, right? I'm not telling you to give us their info if they don't want us to have it. But give us the opportunity to say, hey, welcome to Peoria uh, and make them feel welcome right away. Because as we build this welcome wagon, we got to have people to welcome, right? So that's a key action step. If you've hired anyone over the past year or helped sell a home to someone who's looking to plug in, send, them, send us their email or their contact. And we, we want to say welcome and make sure they feel happy here. I'll, I'll give you one more concrete thing you could be doing uh, that I think will help you even as in your jobs as, as realtors and HR professionals. Actually, uh, Leanne, who was our first speaker, kind of waved this book, uh, and, it was, and I wanted to make sure I got it right. It's uh, This Is Where You Belong. Um, it's written by a woman named uh, Melody Wernick, um, and not only is it a great book, it's actually the Peoria Reads book this year. Uh, so run by the Peoria Public Library, um, it's, it's the book we're all supposed to be reading. So let's everybody pick up a copy of uh, This Is Where You Belong and read it and engage in those conversations. It, you know, it's, it's, uh, I haven't had the chance to read the book yet, uh, but it is about engaging in your community uh, and, and loving the, the, the place where you are. How many of you were at the big table two years ago, October 2019, remember when 700 people could get in a room that was out like the balls the last time? There was a woman, she, she worked for the CBD for a while, I, I can't remember, Danetta, I think was her name, but she stood up there and she said, bloom where you are planted, mm -hmm. right? You're planted here in, in, in the Peoria region, and this is the kind of a book that gives you some of those strategies around this. That's one more thing you can do. Thanks. Yes? Uh, I was going to say, it's related to something I just, hi, I'm Leo. Just a thought that you might set up a more clear mechanism for that, like a landing page where someone can sign up to be involved in newcomer social events. Because one of the struggles we have with recruiting, as you know, um, staffing is one of the biggest problems right now, and we're on the front lines of that, and we are overwhelmed. So, anytime we can have another mechanism, and it's not another thing on our plate, yeah. and I don't mean to be negative by saying that, it's just a really huge deal for us right now. Um, it would be amazing to just have something where I could tell the physicians that I bring to town, hey, guess what? There's going to be 
quarterly you know, mixers, you can go to get different drink and meet people and stuff like that. Yep. And that'd be really valuable to the physicians we bring to the community. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this should, should be pretty, pretty easy for us to set up on the, the welcome page that we have and include in the toolkit. Fantastic idea. Thank you. We'll, we'll get that set up. Uh, because as Audrey mentioned, the plan is to do more of these uh, events and uh, we want to get the word out. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I'm just curious, how much are you tapping into the alumni of the colleges and universities in the area? They are on our list. Uh, it's something we're working towards. In addition, like, I like that you said alumni in the universities and the area. So we've, we've got this notion of a homecoming, but not just for the schools, but for people who are uh, from Peoria or who lived here before. What I found that's interesting, uh, I've had a chance to meet quite a few people, most of whom worked for Caterpillar at some point, who've kind of lived in Peoria for a while and left Peoria, um, who've contacted me via social media. They all have this connection still to the area. So Peoria left an imprint on them, and we think that's an opportunity. From the university alumni uh, perspective, our plan and strategy involves uh, setting up tents and boots at the homecomings at places like Eureka and Bradley um, to engage that student population as well. So it's definitely in our strategy. Hi, my name is Alicia, and um, I moved here in December of 2020. I absolutely love the region, and one of the reasons why I wanted to also stay here, like Josh said, is that people are just really kind, but I also have encountered people who are rude that are from here, and I think that one of the keys uh, to the success of keeping people here and wanting them here is to start being nice to each other, right? If we want like if we're just nice to our neighbors right i make it an effort at my building where i live right like live little notes for my uh, i'm probably annoying to them but, um, but when i see them it's a conversation i start and you just start with your neighbor right like it does, they don't have to be new they could just be people you know nice to you to keep them here so just my little two cents thanks and is a, a really great ambassador uh for Peoria. i follow her on social media and I, one, the reason why social media is so interesting to me is you get to control how someone sees your, your space, right? It's like, it's, she, in my opinion, does a, you, in my opinion, do a great job of showing all that there is for Peoria. You show the riverfront, you show the food, you show the people, you show the downtown, the rural areas, uh, and you capture that. People are watching, and she's from California originally, hope you don't mind me saying that. And like her, I po she posts a lot of pictures of the snow. And I think it's interesting that weather was one of the things that you all said is a barrier. But the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. For someone uh, like Alicia or myself who came from a place that never gets snow, the snow is a treat. It's a gem. And you don't know how many people uh, back home in North Carolina see my snow post and write me and say, I'm so jealous. I'm je I wish we had snow. I wish I was there. Wow, that's so cool. Uh, and you know, a little bit, it's just, I know some of you have been here forever, you're like, yeah, wait till you've been here a while. Uh, but it, it, it's, it's all about the story. We control our own narrative, I think is the bottom line, and Alicia does a good job doing that. I am uh, Brecken from Gallery Homes. I transplanted here from uh, Northern California three years ago. Um, to me, I can see Peoria's pendulum swinging. Like, it's, it's building, like, feel the momentum. It's easy to advocate for the businesses and what's growing here. But one part I'm kind of struggling to find, uh, I don't know where and what to do, is the river. Tourism through the river. Losing the spirit of Peoria would be terrible. What can we do as a community to kind of advocate for, for that aspect? I might have to ask someone from the CVB to come and chat a little bit about the tourism piece. Um, JD, you want to touch on what we're, how we're thinking about the river? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Thank you for bringing up that. As you know, um, uh, JD Delfonso with uh, Discover Peoria, uh, we went through a strategic planning process last July and had our eyes set on how do we sell and how do we promote assets in which we could be underutilized. And the top of that list was the river. Uh, now we've talked to you. Tri-County Planning Commission, Ray Lee, so they'll tell you we have to do some work on there to make it more accessible due to the challenges we see there, but 
as part of the development we have. So, uh, high level, how do we do that? How do we how do we promote tourism along our uh, greatest natural reset uh, resource? Um, uh, that is really truly the sole reason why people have chosen to live here for more than 340 years. Uh, so, taking that into account of how the bureau and our entities work towards promoting those assets, not just for visitors but for residents alike, under the belief that. It's good for a resident, it's going to be good for a visitor. We're taking a high level approach at this point to hopefully narrow down how we can do that. So, is this an asset that we can sell to bring events uh, to the area? Uh, just for example, I'm not saying there's anything proper. Has there ever been a rowing competition on our river? Is it, is it feasible for that? We're starting to work with industry professionals uh, and people in our industry to see is it feasible for us? What assets do we have uh, that we can help sell uh, in a new way? Um, and aside from just bringing events, how do we promote uh, that tourism for our residents as well? Not tourism, but for um, our residents to enjoy at the same time. That's the spirit of Gloria, or boating, or um, uh, fishing, things of that sort. I think if you talk to Kim Book and staff, they'll tell you how great of a river it is, despite some of the commentary that goes around it. So it's top of mind for us as it pertains to our strategic plan and efforts in which we work with industry partners to analyze ways that we can use uh, that river in, in more capacity. So I'm not sure if that helps answer your question, but. Uh, we are. We know. We know. We're thinking about it. So, any recommendations too? Just let us know. We're I, all ears. Uh, so, JD, you know that I want a Ferris wheel on a riverfront. So, I'm putting that in your I'm putting that in your in your bucket there. <laughs> uh, any any other questions? <clears throat> Hi, um, my name is Isaac. I just recently moved from Texas and. In the past month and one of the biggest challenges moving here to Peoria was actually finding an apartment. My partner and I moved here and we didn't want to buy a house per se. We, I actually had the same experience that you had almost word for word. <laughs> I got into an Uber and it was almost like, why did you move here? And I spoke to someone, why did you move here? <laughs> and my partner had the same thing, why did you move here? Um, but, you know, we, we've had so much positivity and we've met a lot of great people, but one of the biggest challenges has been finding apartments. And, and it's funny, I'm in a room with the, with the realtors. <laughs> but, um, you know, I was hoping maybe there would be an initiative to kind of publicize a little bit more because, I mean, there are a lot of affordable housing. It's just, I think there's just a lot of issue getting that on the internet because, I mean, I like, probably a lot of other people Googled and it's not there. I mean, if you walk and you see or you call a realtor, y'all have all the information, but it's not as easily found on Google as you would think. In my own personal little search, I, I had to find through someone else, through someone else, through someone else, and even then it was like finding a needle in a haystack kind of thing. So. Yeah, I, I can relate to that experience. Uh, obviously, we had the Uber thing in common, but I also wasn't looking to buy a house immediately when I came. I was looking to rent a place, and fortunately, was able to find something uh, with Maloof and the team, uh, and eventually bought the house that, that I rented. But uh, you're right, Google is, it's really tough to find apartments. Um, but I wonder if there's a resource in the room. Uh, I don't know if it's par. I don't know how much the realtor community here works with the kind of rental market, but that's, that's something, something we should look into. into. Uh, Chris and I have talked a little bit about this, particularly for younger talent, as we're looking at uh, Gen Z and millennials, uh, student loan debt being what it is, buying a home for certain populations is not on their radar, maybe feels impossible. Whereas Peoria has lots of affordable homes, but when you got $150,000 worth of student loan debt, which Gen Z, uh, I think the average is somewhere like $75,000 worth of debt. Uh, that might not be on your radar immediately, and it could preclude you from moving to a place if you don't find an apartment that you like. So uh, we've talked about that. I don't know if this is the platform to, to hear what resources are out there, but we'd love to work with the realtor community on a rental, maybe a page on our site, right? It's got all the rental apartments that are available and homes for rent, uh, you know, single family homes for rent. Uh, great point. Right. Joshua, another thought, it keeps coming up, it's been talked about like three or four times here, but have you ever thought about having a meeting like this? These, these people are strong advocates already. Have you thought about having a meeting with hospitality and drivers and the restaurant hostesses and whining and dining them? So. We actually have about the Go ahead, Jay. Go ahead, Jay. So I'm going to pop in here because this is the, the second or third time I've heard this topic this week. And 
Uh, I'm glad it's being discussed. Um, we, the, the, the Convention Business Bureau is working, again, it's a uh, goal two of our strategic plan uh, to engage more with uh, the hospitality staff to help train on uh, this, this, these topics. Okay. Being Sorry, that we did. So we don't have so we don't have these stories of hoteliers or Uber drivers. So taxi drivers, Uber drivers, hotel, restaurant staff. Uh, we have a large representation with the Heart of Illinois Hospitality Association within our board. Uh, Dan Corey of uh, uh, Restaurant Tour is our chairman currently and president of, of OIHA. Uh, we've had this discussion as well. With the staffing issues that our restaurants and hotels have had, I think it's key to inform and train those um, uh, employees when we have them in much of a larger setting. How we're gonna do that, we're, we're working through that. Actually, Beth Roosh, director of sales, is championing that. She works closely with uh, many of those clients coming into town, with those hotels uh, and our restaurants as well. So I'm glad you brought it up. I believe it was talked about maybe on Greg and Dan, and uh, so, for, uh, so much so that we're gonna bring in our bus driver, Willis Thomas, who makes an impression to talk about that topic, I think, with Greg and Dan next time we're on. So uh, I appreciate that question because it's top of mind and we're finding out the best way to invite turn out like this as uh, best we can when, when people are so short staffed at the same time, finding that, that time to train them appropriate. Maybe it's not something like this because of the staffing issues, but getting them that training they need to, to, to help out. I appreciate that question. I want to keep that top of mind for our staff as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we've got to wrap it a bit, but building on JD's point, I'd like you all to give yourselves a round of applause for taking time to do this. Um, we, we know how short staffed everyone is, and this is super valuable time. And we thank you for spending it with us for this important effort. Um, do I have time for one more? I've got time for one more, so yes. Hi, my name is Kylie. I'm an employment specialist. And um, I do have an issue kind of with some of the qualified candidates that I receive with transportation, affordable transportation. Um, some of the jobs are early at night. Some of them are on outskirts of town. Um, for instance, Mapleton. Uh, from Peoria to Pekin, um, a lot of great opportunities out there with qualified candidates, just no affordable way to get them to and from work. Um, bus lines are limited with hours and uh, distance. Uh, taxis are super expensive, Ubers are scarce. I was just wondering if there was um, maybe a solution, a possible solution. Uh, in, a, in a community our size, that's one of the biggest struggles, right? You know, we are, uh, I mean, I come from the car center of America, which is Los Angeles, where everybody just drives everywhere, and everybody seems to own a car. Here in Peoria, uh, in the Peoria area, it, we are very automobile uh, dependent. Uh, we actually have a really great uh, public transit organization in CityLink, but they are constrained by lots of other, you know, ridership, and, you know, everybody wants them to, uh, offer more, but nobody seems to be willing to pay them to do so, right? So it's a kind of a chicken and egg. They are working on some microtransit issues. Um, I think employers have to start thinking differently. Quite frankly, I'll just call out that you know, um, if you've got uh, you know, uh, if you've got a, an outpost uh, company that's not on a bus line, then you may need to create a van service. I mean, I think that it's, it's you know, I, I, and I think there could be partnerships that are built to start thinking about that because I don't know. Um, so I don't know if, uh, you know, Mapleton, you know, the uh, uh, Evonik or Anza or Caterpillar, there's a lot of employers in that area in Mapleton, and my guess is that um, for a second shift on a Saturday night, there's there's no bus line, but maybe those employers could get together to create some sort of van, uh, van pool system uh, that would, you know, get folks, you know, in and out of town. I just think we all have to think differently. We can't consistently rely on a public entity like CityLink uh, to maybe run an unprofitable line uh, and then be mad that uh, taxes are high to subsidize this. So I just think it's going to have to be a community conversation. I would, I think that the folks at CityLink um, would appreciate hearing more from employers. Uh, we, you know, they're always calling for more input, you know, the public meetings, surveys, and then nobody takes them. And then everybody complains, right? So this is part of just being an American too. Uh, is, uh, is, is to complain about problems, and I'm not pointing you out in particular, it's just this is a, all of you, and me included, have this. Good. It's easy to complain, um, hard to engage, but I think there's real opportunities there to engage uh, with an entity like CityLink 
um, you know, and, and really figure out what, what, what opportunities there are. So they've been looking at my, what they call microtransit, which is kind of getting you from the end of the line to where you want to go. And I would encourage you to engage, especially if you're an employer, engage with them and tell them what you need, uh, because that's what they're looking, uh, that's what they're looking to do. Thanks, Chris. I think about some of the new developments too with the Amazon Distribution Center in Pekin. Um, you know, they're going to need lots of workers and need to move people around. So I agree. Innovation is going to be key for us to, to be competitive. Uh, so thank you all. This has been tremendously valuable for us. I hope it was as valuable for you all. Uh, as Chris mentioned, it's so important for us to hear from you. This is that platform to do it. We'd love for you all to take the survey. We're going to send that out via email to make sure that you have it. Please do complete it. That data is going to be very helpful to ensure that we're successful with our effort. There's more food over here. If you want to stop by the food table, there's some fruit and some pastries left. Uh, uh, no donuts left, I don't think. <laughs> um, but please help yourself to the food on the way out. Thanks again to the Scottish Rite Theater, to the KD, KDB group for hosting us. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful day.